So it is a pleasure to have with us today Dr. Francisco Gonzalez Montoya from UNAM, from Mexico University, and also from uh, University of Leeds, a second affiliation. Francisco is an expert on uh, nonlinear dynamics, Hamiltonian nonlinear dynamics. Uh, he spent some time in Bristol with our colleague here, Marthos Katsanikas, who will say a few words first about uh, Francisco. And then, Francisco, you may start. Uh, as I told you, uh, maybe for clarification, there will be small interruptions and the discussion will be at the end. Okay, we may start. Yeah, Francisco, I know Fran many years ago. We are the same research group. His studies are mainly in physics, bachelor, master, and PhD at the University of Mexico. Mm -hmm. I think all of them are at the same university. Yes. Uh, and uh, he was postdoc uh, at many research groups in, uh, in Europe. Mainly, he, uh, he was postdoc at the research group of mathematical physics at the University of Bristol. And then he was uh, postdoc at the research group of Stephen Wiggins yeah. uh, in uh, applied nonlinear dynamical systems and chaos. Uh, of the University of Bristol. Now he has uh, his postdoc at uh, the University of Mexico and the research institute at Guanabaca, I think. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And also he worked also with uh, as a uh, research associate at the University of Leeds, at the Department of yes. Chemistry. Uh, his research works is mainly on the, the computation of normally hyperbolic invariant manifolds. Uh, he's the first that he invented uh, uh, numerical methods about the computation of these uh, manifolds. Until now, we had only uh, methods with uh, using normal forms or using uh, house indicators like FLI or Lagrangian descriptors. Uh, Franz is uh, an expert to this, and uh, his talk will be about this in uh, uh, Hamiltonian problem. Okay. 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 Uh, thank you very much for your kind introduction. Uh, well, uh, let me uh, start. Well, uh, the title of the talk is uh, Normally Hyperbolic Invariant Manifolds, the Stormer Problem, a generalization of unstable periodic orbits and its role in the transport in the phase space. Uh, this work is a collaboration with Professor Christoph Jung at the University of Mexico. And, uh, well, let me start. Um, uh, we are going to study a special type of invariant manifold in the phase space called uh, normally hyperbolic invariant manifold. And uh, in order to study um, and have an idea about uh, what does it means. First, we are going to consider a very simple case, uh, an integrable case, actually. And this case is uh, constructed uh, is uh, constructed um, uh, from a saddle potential energy surface, uh, where all the degrees of freedom are uncoupled. Um, with the help of this um, uh, simple system, we can understand the geometrical ideas uh, 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 um, to construct the NIM. After that, we are going to move to uh, the uh, system of one electric particle that is moving in the magnetic field of one uh, dipole. Uh, this system is an all approximation to the motion of one charged particle that is moving around the magnetic field of the Earth and is deflected. This is the old Stormer problem. And uh, it helps to understand qualitatively uh, why we have the lights on the uh, north uh, aurora borealis and things like that. Um, and after that, we are going to break the rotational symmetry of the magnetic field. Then uh, we don't have any more uh, the conservation of the angular momentum, one component, actually. Uh, and the system becomes fully chaotic. And with the help of the results 
of the partially integrable system, we can understand uh, and construct an approximation to the NIM and its invariant manifolds for this case. Okay. Oh. Okay. Let's start with the a simple case just to pick some ideas. Uh, first, we consider the motion of a particle in one Hamiltonian like this. Uh, the potential energy is just one inverted parabola. The parabola has a maximum at the origin. And uh, for energy equal zero, uh, the origin is uh, an equilibrium point, an unstable equilibrium point. Okay, then uh, let's see uh, uh, the phase space associated to this uh, system. Well, uh, for energies less than zero, energies here, for example, uh, a particle that is moving from uh, left to the right is going to do something like this and then back. In the phase space, uh, we have uh, lines like this. It goes from positive momentum to negative momentum, but it doesn't cross the origin. Now, if we increase the energy and we consider energies bigger than zero, uh, the motion of the particle is unbounded in both sides, then it can go from one side to the other. In the phase space, it corresponds to the lines like this, that goes from a um, positive momentum and cross the origin and go to the other side. Okay. For energy E equals zero, we have a very special uh, set called the stable manifold, and it corresponds to a particle uh, that goes uh, from here and approach asymptotically to the origin. Uh, we can um, calculate um, the equations of motion um, for this system and if we consider the line Q1 equal to minus P1, the equations of Hamilton are these, and the solutions are like this. Uh, then we can see clearly uh, the synthetic motion that approach to the origin. Okay, this line, the line defined by uh, this set of equations is called the stable manifold. Okay, uh, the stable manifold is the set of points such that uh, asymptotically approach to uh, the fixed point of the system. In this case, the fixed point, uh, we uh, uh, call it calligraphic M, and is uh, the origin in the uh, phase space. Okay. In an analogous way, if we uh, run the time in the other direction, in negative direction, uh, we can define an analogous set called the unstable manifold and are all the trajectories that diverge from the origin um, and are defined like this. Okay, is the red line in this plot. Okay. Now, uh, let's consider a, a, a case a little bit uh, more rich. Um, the motion of one particle in one uh, saddle potential. Uh, this is the Hamiltonian of the system. Uh, here we have a plot of the uh, potential energy surface um, in color scale also in this side. The, um, um, the color uh, indicates um, 
the values of the potential energy surface. Uh, uh, if the colors are uh, close to uh, blue, uh, we have uh, negative values of the potential. And if the color is close to yellow, uh, we have positive values of the potential here. Uh, then from the form of the potential, we can get some properties of the system uh, easily. Uh, for example, if we consider a, a particle with energy bigger than zero and uh, with initial conditions just in the uh, Q2 um, um, coordinate, just velocity in this side, then uh, the particle is going to oscillate here. And if we put uh, any, um, if we uh, move a little bit uh, the initial conditions outside the, this uh, line, then um, uh, we are going to see the effects of the unstable degree of freedom, the degree one, and the particle is going to oscillate, but also uh, is going to uh, diverge and go uh, far away. Okay. Well, uh, the equations of motion are these and uh, are linear equations, uh, very simple. And if we want to understand uh, the phase space of the system, uh, we can do it uh, uh, just considering every degree of freedom uh, in a separate way. Um, for the unstable degree of freedom, we have uh, the same motion like in the previous uh, case. Um, uh, for the uh, other degree of freedom, Q2, uh, we have oscillatory motion in the phase space, the circles here in this direction. Okay. Then if we combine uh, the two motions, we are going to uh, understand the motion of the uh, uh, full uh, phase space. That's very simple. Okay. Well, uh, in this uh, case, the origin is a unstable equilibrium point for energy equals zero. If we consider an energy bigger than zero and uh, uh, for the um, first degree of freedom, the unstable degree of freedom, uh, we take energy equal zero. Uh, that means that uh, we don't have any uh, velocity in that direction. Uh, uh, then uh, we are going to have a periodic orbit uh, defined by this equation. And this periodic orbit is unstable. And associated to this uh, unstable periodic orbit, we have also uh, stable and unstable manifolds that are constructed um, like in the previous case. Um, we need to consider uh, the circle in the um, a phase space of the uh, second particle, the oscillatory degree of freedom, and a one line in the uh, unstable degree of freedom. Then uh, uh, we have a kind of uh, cylinder in the whole phase space. Okay. Uh, one uh, cylinder is uh, stable, converged to the uh, periodic orbit, and the other cylinder is unstable, diverge from the uh, periodic orbit. Okay, now uh, let's do the same, but with more oscillatory degrees of freedom. We have a collection of oscillatory degrees of freedom. The equations of motion are linear, then are easy to solve and understand. And the phase space is, uh, 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 is just the combination of the phase space of uh, the previous cases. We just add one uh, oscillatory degree of freedom more. 
Uh, that's very simple. Now, um, the analogous of the uh, unstable periodic orbit is now a n-dimensional sphere defined by the oscillatory degrees of freedom. And it has a, a zero value for the uh, momentum and a position uh, for the unstable degree of freedom. And in analogous way, we can construct the uh, stable and unstable manifolds of this uh, 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 n-sphere and are totally analogous to the previous case. Uh, we, we can construct a, a, a multidimensional uh, cylinder defined by uh, this equation for the uh, stable uh, manifold. And for the unstable manifold, uh, something uh, analogous. Okay. Okay. Uh, one of the um, uh, motivations to study uh, those invariant uh, sets in the phase space is a chemical problem. Uh, it's a very old idea developed by Bigner. Um, it's more or less a, 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 like this. Uh, we consider a, a molecule that is going to be very close to dissociate, and we have uh, many uh, degrees of freedom. But a one degree of freedom uh, as, is associated to the dissociation of the molecule is an unstable degree of freedom. The other degrees of freedom are just oscillations. Then um, uh, uh, we can understand uh, uh, properties of the dissociation in the phase space and actually uh, calculate uh, the, uh, the number of uh, um, um, uh, particles that, uh, well, we need to count uh, the number of uh, situations that are uh, connected to dissociation in the phase space. And we can do it with uh, the name. Um, and there is a very interesting concept uh, called dividing surface that is going to tell us uh, how to calculate this uh, 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 chemical reaction. Um, and in order to construct um, this dividing surface that divides products from reactants, uh, we need to do uh, some steps in the classical algorithm. Uh, and well, in the case of one periodic orbit, we need to project the periodic orbit that is in the phase space to the configuration space. After that, we consider a, a point in the projection and construct a circumference in the case of the periodic orbit in the momentum uh, plane with uh, this radius. Uh, and uh, we take the union of all uh, the circumferences for all the points in the projection. Then uh, we can construct uh, the dividing surface. Uh, this dividing surface uh, has uh, the right dimension to divide the phase space. And it has some interesting properties. Uh, uh, the periodic orbit. Excuse and... me, Francisco. Yes? Is the v, was the V of Q still quadratic? Uh, sorry? This V of Q here. Uh, v of what, Q. what function uh, is it? Uh, it's a function uh, just that it has some, uh, uh, it's a, uh, a saddle potential. Yeah. Of course, it's, in, it's not just the, quadratic. It's not quadratic. Uh, no, not necessarily quadratic. In general, no, it's not necessarily no. quadratic. Okay. okay, thank you. Okay. Um, uh, this object, uh, the dividing surface, has three interesting properties. Uh, the first uh, property is that uh, the periodic orbit and 
uh, the orbit with opposite momentum uh, are contained in the uh, dividing surface. The uh, second property is that uh, those periodic orbits are boundaries a bit in the dividing surface that uh, tell us uh, which trajectories enter to the dividing surface or which trajectories leave the dividing surface. And the third uh, property that is uh, most difficult to prove in general uh, is that uh, the flux uh, through the um, a dividing surface is minimal. That means that if we consider a perturbation at the formation of the uh, dividing surface a little bit, the flux uh, increases. Okay. And this is uh, everything. Uh, this property is uh, very important for chemistry because we want to calculate the, uh, uh, the flux uh, associated with the chemical reaction. Okay. Uh, now uh, uh, is the second part of the talk, is the Stormer problem. Uh, the Hamiltonian of a, a particle that is moving in the magne magnetic field of a dipole is given by this expression, where A is the vector potential that is only function of the um, cylindrical radius and set. Of course, uh, because it's a system with a uh, rotational symmetry around the axis uh, defined by the uh, dipole, uh, we can use uh, cylindrical coordinates to describe the motion of the system. Um, uh, from here, um, we can see that uh, uh, the angle phi is not in the Hamiltonian, then we have one conserved quantity that is uh, the one component of the angular momentum, this one. Okay, then uh, for some very special sets of initial conditions, we have some uh, bounded unstable trajectories around the dipole. And in order to understand uh, uh, those uh, special trajectories, uh, we can use uh, the effective potential. The effective potential of the system is given by this expression. And uh, here we have in color scale, uh, a plot of the effective potential that is parameterized by the uh, value of the angular momentum. In this case, uh, the angular momentum is equal to one. And uh, black is, the, uh, is for the minimum value of the potential is in this region. And yellow is for the maximum value of the potential in this region. Uh, the potential uh, in the white uh, part uh, goes very fast to infinity, then uh, we got it. Uh, this potential goes up, 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 up. But uh, we decided to cut it in order to have a nice plot. Well, uh, we can see here that um, the effective potential has a saddle point here. In the set direction is stable, and in the row direction is unstable. Then uh, associate this uh, saddle point in the potential, uh, we have uh, unstable periodic orbits, and the unstable periodic orbit corresponding to uh, this value of the angular momentum is this one, this blue line. Uh, and that corresponds to uh, this uh, uh, quasi-periodic periodic orbit in the configuration space. Okay. Well, 
if we uh, change the value of the angular momentum, uh, we are going to have uh, bifurcations in the phase space. And uh, if we consider the uh, unstable periodic orbit, um, uh, it has a, uh, a bifurcation diagram uh, like this. And uh, here is the minimum value of the angular momentum uh, where the um, unstable periodic orbit burns. And is represented by this uh, black line. And okay. Um, if we consider uh, the projection of the unstable periodic orbits in the configuration space rho set, we have a family of unstable periodic orbits. Here uh, is the uh, unstable periodic orbit uh, or point uh, associated uh, to the minimum value of the potential is this, correspond to this. And the last one correspond to the maximum value of the angular momentum possible before the uh, hyperbolic periodic orbit disappears. And uh, well, if we consider um, uh, the projection of the unstable periodic orbit in the uh, plane set P set, uh, we have uh, concept concentric uh, curves. Uh, this dot corresponds to uh, the minimum value of the angular momentum and the most external uh, curve uh, corresponds to the maximum value of the angular momentum. Okay, well, uh, uh, this is a non-integrable problem. Then a very valid question is, what happens with the invariant manifolds, uh, the uh, cylinders in the phase space that we uh, construct for the linear case? Well, uh, Poincaré uh, had a very clever idea to understand um, uh, the properties when we uh, uh, consider a chaotic system. And well, uh, is uh, for me a kind of incredible how he was able to imagine so many things uh, with the computer. Um, uh, of course, he considered at first uh, the integrable cases and then uh, study the nonlinear cases. But uh, well, it's remarkable how he was able to do so many things with a computer. And he described uh, uh, the system, uh, the phase space of the system, like uh, uh, um, something very complicated with uh, an infinite uh, uh, lattice that intersects in a very fine mesh. And well, uh, he said that he uh, he didn't attempt to draw. Okay. Um, well, um, in order to study uh, uh, what happened with the stable and unstable manifolds of the periodic orbit, he constructs a, a discrete map to study the dynamics. Uh, here we have a unstable periodic orbit in black, this curve, and uh, he considered a, a plane that caught the unstable periodic orbit. And uh, the intersection of the uh, periodic orbit with the plane is a, a fixed point for the uh, discrete map that he constructed. Uh, well, if we consider now the uh, stable manifold, for example, a, a small segment of the stable manifold, the trajectories in the stable manifolds converge to the periodic orbit. Then in the, in the discrete map, in the Poincaré map, um, we are going to see one intersection and then the periodic orbit, uh, the trajectory approach to the periodic orbit 
and intersect again in the same line. And this line, the points in, in, the, in the line converge to the fixed point. And uh, analogous uh, considerations for the unstable periodic, uh, uh, for the unstable manifold in green. Well, uh, for the Stormer problem, uh, we have uh, this Poincare section. Uh, the um, hyperbolic fixed point corresponding to the unstable periodic orbit is here. And in red, we have the stable manifold and in uh, green, the unstable manifold. Uh, we can see this complicated structure. Okay. Uh, well, uh, how uh, the Poincare map help us to understand the dynamics? Well, um, from the previous uh, uh, picture, from this picture, uh, we can see that uh, in the case of a two degree of freedom system, the, um, uh, the phase space has dimension uh, four. If we consider the conservation of the energy, we can, uh, uh, we can plot everything just in three dimensions. Uh, the motion is constrained to the constant energy manifold. Then we can paint everything. Uh, and the stable and stable manifolds uh, have dimension uh, two. Then uh, divide the uh, three-dimensional uh, space and form impenetrable barriers in the phase space because uh, the solutions are unique. Then uh, there is no possibility to cross a. a a surface uh, defined by uh, solutions. And then from, for the point carry map, we have more or less the same. Uh, okay, then uh, let's consider a set of initial conditions between two segments of the stable and stable manifolds. For example, this blue set. And if we apply the Poincaré map, uh, the imagination of this set is this. And if we continue the iterations of the Poincaré map, we have this. Um, then if we understand the structure of the lines here, we can understand uh, very well the dynamics in the Poincaré map. For the reason it's important uh, to study uh, the structure of the lines. Okay. But um, uh, we want to study uh, the three-dimensional case. And in order to do it, let's consider a uh, the Poincaré map uh, for uh, different values of the angular momentum. Here we have uh, the angular momentum, and here we have the uh, canonical plane rho p rho. Uh, then uh, we have a kind of stacks of the uh, Poincaré maps of the uh, two degree of freedom system parametrized by the angular momentum. And if we consider um, the motion in the angle phi, uh, the third uh, coordinate uh, that is uncoupled, um, uh, we are going to have a kind of invariant cylinder uh, construct constructed with the union of all the uh, unstable uh, hyperbolic fixed points in the Poincaré map parametrized by the uh, angular momentum Cartesian product with the cycle. And this is an invariant manifold. Okay, and if we want to construct the stable and stable manifold of this uh, object, we just need to take a, 
the stable and stable manifold of the uh, fixed point. Uh, take the union for all the values of the angular momentum and take the Cartesian product with the uh, cycle S1. Then we have uh, the stable and unstable manifold of this object. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, uh, this is uh, the construction of, in the Poincare map, but if we want to study uh, uh, the perturbed system, it's not easy to visualize uh, this thing, and it's not easy to plot uh, anything, because here, uh, to construct this plot, we are considering um, uh, uh, that we have a family of uh, to the degree of freedom systems parametrized by the value of the angular momentum. If we break the symmetry, that is what we want to do, we cannot apply this kind of construction. But uh, we can use other techniques to visualize uh, the phase space of the system. Okay, a way to um, uh, visualize uh, the structure of the phase space uh, that is not based in the Poincaré map, is um, based in uh, the escape time. This is um, a phase space structure indicator that is uh, quite simple and useful for open systems. Uh, first, uh, uh, we consider um, uh, the integration time of the trajectory and we remove the asymptotic uh, uh, distance from the origin divided by the asymptotic velocity. And this part is uh, the uh, plus contribution to the indicator. In analogous way, but with the time in the opposite direction, the integration in the opposite direction, uh, backward direction in time, uh, we construct the negative, well, the minus part of the indicator. We add these two quantities and we construct a phase space structure indicator. Then here in this side, uh, for example, uh, uh, we uh, take initial conditions in the plane rho p rho uh, for an integration time equal nine and calculate the scalar field uh, generated by this phase spaces structure indicator and we can see some signatures of the uh, dynamics of the uh, invariant sets in the phase space. Uh, in yellow is uh, the uh, by the uh, positive values of the indicator and in blue, the negative values. Uh, here is for uh, integration time equal nine, and here for integration time equal, equal to 15. Uh, we can see uh, that if we increase the integration time, we have a better definition of the structures in the phase space. And uh, is very similar to uh, the previous uh, plots, the structure in the previous plots. And uh, here in the maximum of this quantity, we have the, um, a candidate uh, for the uh, unstable periodic orbit of the system. And let's remember uh, why we have uh, this uh, uh, these plots. Uh, um, well, if we remember the definition of stable manifold, uh, all the points that uh, converge to the uh, periodic orbit, uh, then uh, those points approach to the periodic orbit and never escape. Uh, actually, then the asymptotic distance 
uh, is uh, almost zero, or zero, uh, effect, uh, basically, something small. Uh, then if we compare uh, this quantity uh, with the value of the indicator for one trajectory that is uh, that lives and goes far away from the interaction region, uh, this quantity D is going to be uh, large. Then it's normal that uh, we have high values for uh, the points that are uh, close to the stable or unstable manifold. Okay. Now, uh, what happens if we um, break the symmetry of the system and we add to the magnetic field one quadrupole like this? Uh, the system is not symmetric, then we cannot use the angular momentum to construct the point carry map and construct the stack. But we can use the indicators. Um, and for example, here for an angle phi equal to minus pi over four and a perturbation parameter equal to 0 0.5, uh, we have this plot. And if we increase the value of the perturbation, the epsilon parameter here, uh, for the same uh, set of initial conditions, uh, we see uh, uh, that the lines are not very well defined for the same uh, value of integration time. On the other hand, if we consider um, a other set of initial conditions, uh, phi equal to pi over four, now positive, um, and the same value of the perturbation parameter, we see a different structure here, but uh, if we increase the value of the perturbation parameter to 0 0.25, uh, we can see a, a considerable difference between uh, the plot on the uh, right and on the left. Here we have very well-defined structure, and actually we can guess that here in the black point, we have a maximum value of the uh, escape time. Then um, probably we have here a value for uh, 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 this uh, set of initial conditions intersect the uh, NIM. Okay. Well, in order to be uh, more sure about uh, the NIM and how to construct it numerically with a very simple technique. Let's consider the, uh, the uh, point carry map in the two degree of freedom system just to fix ideas, but it works in more dimensions. Uh, first, if we consider a point in the point carry uh, section, uh, uh, this one, x zero, that is very close to the a, a point in the NIM. If we apply the point carry map, this point is going to escape, then it's going to this direction. Then, uh, because we want to construct an approximation that is close uh, to the NIM, uh, we project this point uh, uh, to a uh, to the stable manifold, this is a green line here, or a point very, very close. And we repeat the procedure. Uh, iterate, project, iterate, project, iterate, project. This is the basic idea to construct an approximation to the NIM. Of course, uh, we need a, a point uh, very close to the NIM to start. And this point uh, is given by our uh, guess uh, from the indicator. Okay. Uh, uh, here um, uh, we have the configuration space and one uh, periodic orbit in the configuration space. And also in uh, blue, we can see some intersections uh, 
of the trajectories with uh, the plane theta equals zero and the construction of the Poincaré map here projected in the configuration space. And then we can see here uh, some islands, stability islands. Uh, and okay. And some uh, unstable parts here and chaotic parts around. Okay. Uh, using this idea, we can construct a projection of the Poincaré map in the plane uh, phi L set. And for the value epsilon equal 0 0.5, uh, the projection of the Poincaré map is uh, something like this. Uh, we can see some stability regions and some unstable regions and points here that are very close to the boundary of the NIM. If we increase uh, the value of the perturbation, uh, some regions disappear and we have only uh, the stability islands here and here, but uh, we don't have uh, more points in the NIM. Then the NIM bifurcates and uh, breaks. Uh, this technique is uh, very simple, but at the same time, because it's constructed, directed with trajectories, is very reliable. Uh, when we use uh, normal forms, it could be uh, difficult to get results related with bifurcations, because we need uh, to use uh, very large expressions that uh, require uh, a lot of uh, memory to handle in order to construct some approximation. Uh, also, there is another method called parametrization method, uh, but uh, that method uh, only works when uh, the NIM uh, uh, survives. Uh, in the case that some pieces are breaking, then uh, the method doesn't work. Okay, then uh, the conclusions. Uh, the NIMs are generalization of hyperbolic periodic orbits. Uh, the invariant manifolds of the NIMs that we construct uh, uh, divide the constant energy manifold in the phase space and help us to understand the dynamics. Uh, the NIMs uh, are robust under perturbations and the stable and unstable manifolds are also robust under perturbations. And uh, the escape time is a tool that helps us to visualize multidimensional phase space and help us to uh, detect bifurcations in the system. Uh, well, uh, uh, thank you very much for your attention. And uh, you can find more details about this work in this article with Christoph Jung. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Francisco. Thank you very much. Uh... Well, it is time for questions, and uh, let's see here who else is uh, there. So, Mirella, uh, I'll speak loud or come closer. Yeah. Uh, hello. Hello. Uh, I'm Mirella Harsula. Uh, we have used the method of escape times. Uh, in, uh, for example, 2D mappings, and we have seen that these, uh, uh, the escape times uh, give the configuration of the stable manifolds, as, yes. as you have always shown. Now, we are interesting, now we have also studied the stickiness of chaotic orbits along unstable manifolds, which help us in uh, uh, galactic potentials, for example, to see why these orbits support the features of the galaxy, like the spiral arms. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, in what we do now, uh, together with uh, Manthos, uh, we are interested in 3D black boxes. So the phase space is a 4D phase space, and we use uh, the method of color in order to 
uh, defined the, the fourth uh, dimension. And now we want to study the stickiness in this 4D phase space, because we also, uh, we, we see that there are chaotic, 3D chaotic orbits that stay there for a long time. Uh, uh, and we want to find these objects, like for example, memes, these objects, the surfaces, along with now these chaotic orbits, uh, will uh, stay for a long time there and support again in this three-dimensional now system, support again the features of the galaxy. Okay, so do you think that this method can help us find in this three dimension, three degrees of freedom, uh, can help us find again these surfaces because we are interested to see now uh, to study the, the stickiness in this 4D phase space. Uh, yes, yes, uh, we can apply uh, this method to a, a, a very different kind of uh, uh, Hamiltonian systems. Mm -hmm. And yes, uh, we have some experience with different um, uh, three degree of freedom systems. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course, uh, we can uh, apply uh, the methods to study uh, uh, galactic potentials. Uh, actually, I think Christoph Jung has been working a little bit on that direction. Uh, he has some work uh, where he uh, link uh, the stable and stable manifolds of one name uh -huh. with the arms of the a galaxy. And in order to find these objects, uh, these uh, names in uh, this 4D phase space, uh, we can use again the escape times or something else with other method. Uh, I think uh, the escape time is uh, a very good option because it's uh, very easy to calculate. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we just need to integrate the trajectory and uh, calculate finite points mm -hmm. and initial points and integration time, uh, then uh, probably is the best option. And also it converges very fast uh, because if the trajectory is in the name, Mm -hmm. uh, is not going to escape, uh, then we have a very clear maximum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So instead uh, of finding the manifolds themselves, we use the escape times and we find, yes. so we can find this uh, manifold, the, this uh, 4D manifold yes. using the same method, which is uh, yes. interesting. Yes, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are you welcome. Yeah. Have you computed the dividing surface associated with the names? Ah, uh, for this kind of system? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, actually so no. What? But, uh, yeah, I would like to do it. Uh, also, uh, I have to tell you something interesting about the system, and you can see maybe here in this plot. Um, in this case, uh, the NIM uh, uh, is a kind of uh, saddle torus. It's a torus. It's not a, a sphere. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then uh, probably uh, uh, we can think in uh, the right variant to calculate uh, the dividing surface using uh, the traditional method and your method. Uh, and uh, compare uh, how it works. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit different system that in chemistry. I think you have now a toroidal structure. Yeah, yeah, toroidal structure. Yeah, I expected this because until now, many people uh, applied this in all rotating systems. Now we have a paper with uh, Stephen Wiggins uh, that uh, we have, uh, I think in a few days we'll submit this, that uh, we... See, uh, so that uh, the dividing surface, the rotating systems, have a toroidal structure. Yeah, actually, uh, I have a little discussion with uh, Stephen and uh, Roman Schubert, and they told me that rotating systems are very similar to uh, uh, this uh, magnetic uh, uh, system. Then, uh, yeah, I more or less, I am aware about... Uh, really? And the similarities. Robert Mackay was in Bristol. Do you remember this talk? And went uh, after the talk, went for, uh, for uh, 
restaurant, close, uh, restaurant close to the university, and we had a discussion, if you remember, about yeah. bifurcation. Can this method detect the most bifurcations? Uh, I think it's possible to see something. Yeah, because um, if we have a, a big change in the structure of the phase space, mm -hmm. uh, we can guess that uh, is going to be reflected in the escape time of the structures. Yeah, we can see something for sure. Of course, uh, you know very well that uh, part of the game is try to find the initial conditions that intersect something interesting using this kind of methods. Yeah, we need an initial guest. But uh, for sure that we can try. With a new method of periodic orbit dividing surface, because you know, we generalized with Steve, the periodic orbit dividing surface in Hamiltonian systems with three or more degrees of freedom in order yes. to simulate the transition state theory. Because for 30 years, they believed that the transition state theory can be based in a periodic orbit dividing surface only in Hamiltonian systems with two degrees of freedom and uh, on dividing surface only based on the on IMS for Hamiltonian systems with three or more degrees of freedom. With Steve, yeah. that uh, we can do this with periodic orbit dividing surfaces Hamiltonian with three or more degrees of freedom. Have you yes. used periodic orbit dividing surface to detect the homoclinic intersections of the uh, manifolds of the NIM? Because if you have yes. a recent paper with uh, Steve in physical D that we uh, we show homoclinic intersections of the various manifolds of the NIMs uh, using periodic orbit dividing surfaces. Ah, it would be very interesting. Thank you very much, Mateos. Uh, actually, Christoph Jung is also very interested in uh, homoclinic intersections uh, 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 for uh, uh, high dimensional systems. Uh, and at the moment, uh, we are using very simple methods, but it will be nice to see and compare with uh, your methods also. Yeah, it would be very interesting because, the, you know, the Nobel Prize before three years was yes. this thing. And this is the reason that the team of uh, Harvard said that uh, we can do this and it would be very interesting to combine these techniques because actually we want to reformate again the transition state theory of Wigner and uh, to go farther away than, uh, than this. Yeah, it should be very nice also. Yes. Yeah. Uh, let, me, let me ask also, uh, yeah. Francisco, uh, can you uh, follow if you are uh, if you can start on the intersections of the manifolds, stable and unstable? How close can you be? Can you uh, follow a great great number of points? You know, one one of the uh, main uh, uh, topics of uh, uh, statistical also analysis of chaos in these regimes is the fact that we can compute for as long as possible, these intersection points, which since they are between a stable and a stable manifold, they will be there for a very long time. Uh, mm -hmm. can, you, can you do that for long times in, in the future to follow yeah. such a, an intersection in the chaotic region? Uh, follow an intersection. Oh, this is a good question. Uh, uh... Otherwise, you're quickly lost, right? You go, you go yes. to infinity. Yeah, yeah. In this kind of open systems, yes, it's simple because we can go to infinity very fast. Uh, yes. And also, is uh, this kind of uh, approach uh, uh, to find intersections between stable and stable manifolds relies heavily on the um, quality of the trajectories. I mean, if the uh, huh. uh, quality of the numerical integration is good, then we can do a lot of things. Yeah, but these are low uh, dimensional systems. I mean. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we can do a lot of things. We should be dimension. able to do it. Huh? Yeah. But probably, yes. You see, that, that would be very interesting to follow them as, as much as possible. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, uh, yeah, the method is uh, based in one way uh, 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 in the um, 
um, a dimension of the stable and stable manifolds because yes. the by the phase space, then we can keep the things in the right side and continue for very long time. Yeah, I think it's possible. Yeah, that, that would be very interesting. Even for a few thousand such intersections, one can say something about the statistics of the, mm. of the orbit and uh, determine what type of chaos uh, exists there. Yes. Okay. Especially yes. three degrees of freedom. But... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. I say something to this. Yeah, it's very interesting, but... Uh... Would say it, but because uh, uh, we can uh, investigate new types of uh, stickiness, because until now we talk about stickiness in chaos or uh, uh, stickiness in variable array, but uh, three degrees of freedom, but only for uh, a stable variable manifolds of a stable periodic orbits. Maybe we can uh, investigate these cases of stickiness. Uh, mm, okay. Say that is close to this direction. Yeah. Yeah, maybe it's possible to apply the technique. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It could be yeah. very interesting. And then you can see probability distributions which will differ very much from Gaussian. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Wow. Yes. Well, yeah. It sounds very, very interesting. interesting. Very your, interesting. Uh, all from our friends that are following uh, interactively. No. Then uh, we thank Francisco again. Thank you. Thank you, Francisco. Thank, thank you very much. Interesting talk. It was very nice to have you here with us. And thank you very much for the time that you decided to, to <laughs> give the seminar due to the time difference. Bye bye, Franz. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay. bye, -bye. Thank you very much. Bye bye, Bye bye. Bye bye. And we